Kaka playing the early Gemstone Caverns, getting rid of the Teferi. Um, Teferi's been a piece I've seen a lot of players tech into the decks, either for the combo if they're on Displacer Kin, or even just for the silence effect. Um, I'm always looking at it and going, I would love to keep a Teferi in a matchup like this. I think it's something that definitely could be very effective. But it's going to be Jamaica Duke kicking things off. I will be curious to see too if there is a turn zero play off of this gemstone. Could see maybe a tutor at the end step. That would be real high value. This is pre turn one for Kaka here. I mean, it's definitely possible. Uh, the VT coming through here. Um, mm -hmm. That's really nice as well. Off the back of that gemstone caverns. What would you get here, do you think? I would simply pop off uh, if Kaka um, played a dash Ragavan and hit Jamaican Dude. It's not its not the sensible choice, it's the spicy choice. But I think it's most likely going to be a Mana Rock, unless they already have a ton. The Lavinia though, okay. I think that's really good here. Ooh, I like it as well, especially since the Rock Side player tutored up something free mana um, or something dirty. I think we'll be tucked in for a nice long game here i don't blank think... out from kaka here hopefully for not too long um looks like the back okay thank god so we'll be curious to see how the board develops and how people choose to play around these pieces land just a land go for riel uh that's always a scary thing to do like some sometimes you look at it and you're like oh land go is not horrendous but against decks like these in this position because you're up against some very fast decks i don't think you can really afford to i think in most places you can't afford to really um, land draw, uh, sorry, land go, uh, but especially not here. I imagine they had something in hand to cast that was just turned off completely by the Lavinia. Oh, that's true. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, that's me being silly. I completely forget. No, it happens. It happens to everyone. It's magic is hard sometimes. Magic is. And magic's going to be even harder for some of these players having to deal with this Dranus Magistrate coming down. I don't think this is so well timed from Forkhan. And it does look like the Dranith is accompanied by what I believe to be a Wishclaw Talisman. We do see the Talisman come down for Kaka, followed up by the Mystical Tutor for Rael. Firestorm coming through here. You know, I mean, it's something I've seen actually recently um, with the Legacy deck, which utilizes Containment um, Construct. Uh, it's a really spicy card. I'm in love with it. Um, and I think with Rael, it makes sense as well, right? Yeah, it definitely does. Um, curious to see when it comes down or mm -hmm. what will happen there. Yeah. The timing of that will be important. The risk coming down is uh, is very nice for Jamaican dude. Mm -hmm. um, I think especially in the situation where you got slowed down quite significantly by this Lavinia, it's a very nice pickup to have. Dress down coming down will turn off the Lavinia and the Draneth, let you play your commander and then be sacrificed before the rock size turn. So this is exactly what the real player needed here to get out from under all these pieces and not just give the game to another player. And I think this deck probably relies on Riel to really be able to hold a candle to the other decks at the table. So I think it's, it mostly hurts them more than anything. Sure, Timna Kram decks certainly wouldn't mind playing Timna or Kram, but when you've got the Riel deck, you really need every drop of power you can get. Otherwise, I think this pod is certainly going to outpace you. So now that the real is coming down and players are getting more of their pieces online, who are you favoring right now? I mean, I'm always favoring uh, the Tim Necron player with, uh, uh, with the tutor on board. I think that's always something to keep in mind as this deck can be very explosive. Just down putting a lot of work there, it let some things slip through, but no one's been able to capitalize it fully just yet. The game goes on. Even if Rock Rack wants to go off, it wants to go for those breach lines. It's one of the most compact and, you know, easy to go for lines when you have that graveyard fold, like they seemingly do. I think that's five cards in grave. Not quite there for the line that I'm thinking of. Still got to get rid of the Dranath, but close enough. Dark side for three. So not the most value they'll ever see out of one, but it's good color fixing, it is ramp, you do net a treasure off it, essentially. And we did see at the end of Rael's turn, Jamaican actually deadly rollick to the Lavinia. That's not entirely surprising, right? You're looking at this deck and you're like, okay, it does not want Lavinia on the board. So yeah. I'm not surprised to see it invest that. It has rollick in the deck for exactly these kind of problems. Timna coming down, okay. There is an open player now, now that Lavinia's gone, so you will get that card draw with the Dranif swing. 
and I don't think there's anything wrong with being a Tipnacrom player and kind of sitting back. Um, you know, if you can get an early Dranith, an early Rhystic, and kind of let the others peter out and just go in for yourself, that can be really good. It's been uh, something that's been talked about over and over again today and in days past. And this is just going back to the, the value that these blue farm decks can get and why they're so prevalent in the format right now. We do see the Mox Amber coming down. That always works well with good old Roger. Passing back to Timna, so a pretty quick turn rotation that cycle overall. We do see both the Timna and the Dranif swung in here. When a blue farm player has their engine going, they just feel unstoppable. They have so much cards in hand that you just feel like you can't compete against any of it. And speaking of engine, there's a fish. It's kind of crazy just how much they're able to get off just these two commanders. I mean, Chrome is a card that was kind of, you know, looked at with... It's a little bit fringe um, mm -hmm. before the usage of the Jeweled Lotus, before the printing of Jeweled Lotus, but since it has been frankly disgusting um it, it's been in a lot of decks it really has Falcon is in a brilliant spot right now tainted pack for something here it would be crazy if this was tainted pack fourth oracle have demonic in hand and just go from there but i don't think that's going to work so probably just going for a value piece i would honestly think a rhystic study for them would be really good Considering the force, though, so maybe wanting more interaction. I'm genuinely evaluating the Lotus Pell. Might just be for some mana. Ooh, the Thoracle, okay. I think this is an interesting one. I don't know if their list is on Praetis Grass, but I've not taken a gander just yet. If so, they might want to keep it, um, especially with the Breaches lines. Breach lines still kind of cut off by that Draneth. It's a weird situation to find yourself in. Yeah, it's like, it's a hard situation to say no to. And, you know, Thassa is probably your main win con. Unfortunately, it's not the best card for you right now. Mm -hmm. You do say let it go, and you do start with the March of Swirling Mist. So, yeah, removal's good, even if it's only temporary. Getting rid of the Draneth, letting yourself play one of your commanders could be really strong here. I think it's absolutely the right call. And this is a very small one. You're only exiling a couple of cards, but very impactful ones, especially in um, the Thoracle. Um, it's something you kind of like, oh, well, that's unfortunate. It happens. If the list is on Praetor's Grasp, it's not the end of the world. Yeah. There are other ways you could always theoretically brain freeze your opponents out, even if you're not on the grass. We do see the Oppo come down. Looks like Rael is fetching in response. So at least they're not going to be turned off completely from that. Important thing to note is the colors of these decks. Riel is not in black and therefore has access to the least amount of tutors. I would be very shocked if you're ever blowing that one up. That's true. Uh, and Riel too, you're ho very more likely just to draw the card that you need anyway. And we have already seen the Mystical Tutor come out. Looks like we do see the land coming out from the Opposition Agent. Still, they have so much mana. I'm I'm waiting for them to some point in the end step pull something off. It's tricky though, because you don't want to be the first one to try to go for it here, I think. Because the moment you do, you're gonna eat a bunch of counter spells that people have just been accruing. I think it's one of those situations where it's it's for want of a better phrase, a Mexican standoff where you're all sitting there like, I've got counter spells, but obviously I can't go off, guys. Don't be worried about me. Um, and then just sitting, waiting for your chance to shoot second, which is not normally, I guess, how a Mexican standoff works, but at least some kind of strange uh, international standoff going on here. You play the removal, you try to win, you're probably going to be stopped, and then you set someone else up for the win instead, now that mm -hmm. the stacks pieces are gone. If Noob Source is the deciding factor, it's not going to be cock. Unless you add Nors and then somehow get enough mana to, I don't know, cast uh, an extra turn spell. You do have to give them a card here off the march, but other than that, it's been pretty responsible play, it seems like. I would like to say responsible, because even though they gave two players a card, 
I don't think it's that bad. As long as you're feeding both the Timna and the Rograk, uh, sorry, both the uh, Blue Farm and the Rograk player, I think it's fine. Though, again, though, I'm nervous because Rogsai, they're going to untap, Dram's going to be gone, and they have a pretty good grip of cards himself. Okay, looking for that chance now. Hopefully, <clears throat> going to be able to develop something. I mean, the play that always jumps out to you is just play the calm. Um, out of all the options you can make, it's not even horrendous. Delayed boss fireball just cast. That's going to kill off the Timners and mm -hmm. the Rog and the Dockside and the Ragaman. Yeah, that's not bad. I mean, no. maybe. Uh, I can't remember if it does five mad damage or not when it's foretold. I only need to steal four anyway. Sorry. Um, Crumbs are four drop, uh, four power. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, maybe you foretold this, but it kind of. The, the cost goes up way too much, actually. I think I think I'm wrong on that. Yeah, I'm wrong on that. Yeah. yeah um, the good thing about Blade Blast Firefall is it doesn't care where how you cast it from exile. So long as you cast it for exile, you get the additional damage. See, the Krom is sticking around. They would thought that there was going to more damage too. Yeah, Prosper loves to Blade Blast Fireball for that reason. You flip it off the top, and it's a free mana, five damage. Wipe your opponent's board. I really like this as well because it means the Oppo is still going to be alive even with that board wipe. This is actually really good. Ocean Thief in the Rails end step. Caught Borkok uh, did so much to fight for that um, commander to come down. Yeah. Only to have the Ocean Thief fall right after. Looks like we are on Rock Size turn. Oh. Defense grid. This Rock Rack deck is looking hella scary, man. But Snap coming down, Snap probably targeting the Notion Thief. Maybe, or it might be the Oppo, depending on if Forcon's trying to go for it here. Can't have enough mana to go for it, I feel. Well, on their turn. True. But, I mean, I'm a real buddy. Do you think you're going to get through to your turn? A lot of thought happening here. Probably a lot of conversation on the table. Looks like the oppo is moving up. Looks like they are. Looks like it is going back to hand. Yep, there it goes. So now there's just that standoff again. The wish claw and the opposition agent. A tale as old as time. Mm-hmm. Defense grip back on the stack. Looks like Jamaican is passing priority. Priority to Forcon. I mean, Kaka only has one mana, right? There's a reason why you kept up that, inter that, that, la that mana. It's because you have interaction. Or you're bluffing that you have interaction. And I think Kaka's like either umming and ahhing or going, hmm, I have to look like I'm umming and ahhing. Intuition, okay. I would assume then that there is some counter magic for the opposition agent. The stack is wild, I love it. Interaction that's coming. It's going to move into Carl Falcon's turn. And finally, finally, unless they recast this uh, Oppo agent, Oppo. which they do, I was going to say, that's re yeah, okay. So his intuition is really good for that, right? Because not only is his intuition threatening, it basically says to Jamaican dude, hey, recast this off agent or lose. Mm -hmm. um, this sort of intuition though is really nice for Jamaican dude. In fact, to the point where it might be enough to set them off go going off anyway. Yeah, but I imagine Forcon knew this was going to happen and has something in hand to fight through it. So now there's a counter war and if you're the Real or Kaka, you're sitting there like, how do I interact? What am I supposed to do here? What makes it so no, none of these people win the game right now? Yeah. And on top of this, there is still a defense grid <laughs> just sitting there on the stack. And if my memory serves me correctly, if this intuition resolves, don't all three just go under opposition agent? Yep. You get to get three cards from Forkhan's deck I don't see how that could not be a win. Has to be right now. Um, we mm -hmm. do see the fetch in response now that the oppo is on the stack, getting the underground seat. So there it is. <laughs> so it looks like, I'm curious to see what the targets are. But this, this sucks anyway, because you're just giving a bunch of draws to Jamaican dude to find an answer for this intuition anyway. Importantly, however, Rogrek is not on the field. We keep talking about this Wish Claw Talisman. but it's been around since, what, turn one, turn two? It's ever-threatening. Is this Culling We Sacrifice Notion Thief Ad Nauseam? Ooh. And I think 
that they feel like they need to do this because they need to counter spell what's coming next. But the problem is who has counter spells? Well, I'll tell you who. Potentially Kaka. Maybe. And Firestorm, I think I think I saw three cards discarded, at least two, so that's some damage being passed around. The stack is wild, I love it. So what do you do with this mana now? You have it, a treasure theme sack. Oh, I love this. Bring the oppo back to your hand to save it. Beautiful. And then replay it back out. This oppo has bounced three times, uh, twice already. It has been played three times, I think, this turn. Yeah. That is very funny. Notably, the Notion Thief is gone. So, um, Forcon is open to draw more cards here. So they have the potential to draw into something now to stop whatever it is Jamaican's going for. It is a good game. It's a wild game, but it's a good game. The stack you know, right now is, I believe, Snap, Targeting, Opposition Agent, Firestorm, Intuition, then a Defense Grid. The Flusterstorm, however, coming through here, as Noobzors still had something in the bank. I'm going to tell you now, that's a lot of Storm Counters, I think. I think the worry for me is there's been so many resources expended. Is this defense grid even going to matter? Defense grid will be interesting because it's probably going to get countered here. Jamaican dude is probably going to still go for something. Okay, so interesting. Maybe there was a deal made then because we see Forcon go for two lands and probably a, yep the mind break trap okay trap okay okay so that's the power of conversation in politics in cdh uh Forcon had the perfect opportunity to try and set themselves up for the next turn but instead made a deal with their opponents to make sure that they could get the interaction that they needed ask me for i would try to fight the defense grid if for nothing else that it mind break or Mystic is still drawing fork on a bunch of cards, so try to get that down now. And looks like they are going to do that with the Swan Song. All right, two mana still available for fork on. Um, we've only seen the Mind Braid Trap really used for interaction from them, I believe. So a lot of other possibilities here. You yeah. just see a blue tapped. The Dispel, nice. Hey, you did get the card draw for a stick. Do you think Jamaican still has a chance here to try to go for it? Um, no. No? I think too much has been expended. Uh, maybe I'm wrong. Okay, that's that's a lot. I think Adnos would be really good here. We're seeing yes. the Mana Vault <laughs> tap. They're thinking. They're thinking about it. I mean, if you don't win here, you know Forkon's going to win on their turn. So you just, if you have it, you just you go. go for it at this yeah. point. Yeah. I think you're absolutely right. I think you just need to look at this. And, and, I, and, and I tend to look at combo decks in this format like a... Oh, okay. That was not what I was expecting. Okay. Does only net, lose them one mana. That's the important thing here. Yeah. Two mana. Does... What are they casting? Ooh. Chest as well. well. Oh, that's beautiful. That is perfect. That is the exact card you needed if you're Jamaican dude here right now. They have access to two black mana as well with the treasure and with the black mana they have floating. The only problem still remains, there's probably a counter spell in there. I would be shocked if there isn't. I'm expecting to see it played. But Forkhan's looking like there's nothing. Holy mo- they, they might have just done it. Jamaican dude might have just blown this game open. I will say though, Kaka is menacingly holding that hand. Oh. Yeah. Jessica oh. will resolve thing that looks like beautiful. That is perfect for Jamaican dude here. My question now remains, how much do they have in hand? How much are they relying off of these top three cards? Very true. Let's see. Uh, land, it looks like. Yeah, it does look That's like definitely spring leaf. Yeah, yeah, because he's hitting the he's hitting the drum with the crick carp. I remember uh, that okay. piece, the flavor text. That's the best kind of fish to beat against a drum. In case you guys didn't know at home, a wishclaw oh. talisman of their own though. Reset it. 
<laughs> it just was the wrong one. <laughs> <laughs> um, Underworld Breach. Jessica's will again. Orgon's just like waving his hands. What can I do here? I don't have it, guys. I love crack, so three. But three, still net yeah. positive. So net it's positive tricky. then snap, potentially? The problems. Unfortunately for Kaka, it also means he's probably not going to win the game. It could be an Adnors. Uh, I guess it's only for 21, maybe not. Um, Imperial Seal for Jeweled Lotus. Jessica's Will. The Jeweled Lotus. Or not Jeweled Lotus. Um, LED. Blind Side Diamond. The Dock Side coming out first, and I think that really belies the fact that there's going to need to be some colored mana here. I'm interesting to see that that's what they lead with first, but like you were highlighting, get the color fixing if they need it and go from there. Looks like now we have the Imperial still coming up to follow it. I would say you probably go for... Also, I wouldn't hate the Brain Freeze. Just as well is being put on the stack, and the number of cards in Forkon's hand has only gotten larger. Work with. Ah, uh, Forkon's getting frustrated. Yeah. And it's hard. You don't you see you don't see any of the cards in all those cards that you've drawn. It's a bad bait sometimes. Yeah, it happens. It's crazy to me that we haven't seen a counter spell from Forkon yet. Yeah. We've seen, I think. Honestly, the Mind Break Trap and the Dispel are the only two counter spells that I can recall seeing. And one of those is tuned for. The Silent... Kaka! No, I... Buddy! This, no, I think this... I think Kaka was in the right. I think Kaka... Yeah, that's a positive. That's a po Sorry, that's a... Yeah. I can't believe you held it this long. You madman! Oh, that's... That's crazy. I love that. This is a great game. Brain free. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, wait. It's trying to go off on top of this? You, you just you just need to fill your bin for the counter spell to get enough mana for the counter spell, right? Chain of Vapor. Uh, chain of Vapor targeting. Underworld Breach, probably. That's fine, though. No, it's not. Not if you're Because the silence is going to resolve. Yeah. Oh, my lord. Just needs to cast one spell, any spell from their hand. If there's an instant spell here, there's enough to cast that Swan Song from the bin. Yeah, but do they have it? That's a real question. You know what? I would absolutely pop off if one of the cards in the bin was uh, in the hand was Adnors, but it wasn't worth casting. They're going to Adnors for zero, put a card in the graveyard. Uh, that's, that's a very hypothetical. The Ad Nauseam all along, you were right. <laughs> you called it. I mean, you draw a little bit for fun, right? Uh... Probably, you at least go for something, but yeah. The Fierce Guardianship is the top card. That's yeah. very good. And a Mind Break Trap. Okay, I think you stop there, though. That's a lot of life. Yeah, you don't oh, be greedy with it. Okay. 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 I mean, this is a deck designed to add not as well, so it's not That's like true. you're at any real risk. Okay, yeah. well, this is this is GG. Because even if there weren't enough cards in the graveyard, you got the Fierce. Mm -hmm. The Fierce is still here. That's not a problem. In fact, I think you do fierce. Even so, magnificent play, honestly, from Jamaican dude to kind of bring this one through. It just chucks it on top. Yep. Like, oh man, garbage. I I I, th I assume that it's going to be over now, but I don't know for sure. I the mean, that's a, what? The crazy. Stop the the Jessica's will. It doesn't even matter. Mind break trap. Yeah. Any number of target spells, yeah, that's good. And there's the, there's the pile. There goes the uh, the silence. The silence gone as well with all of that. So even if things go wrong here, you're still gonna have stuff in the bin, as long as you stop there. So you stop, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's GG. It's, yeah. This has to be GG, right? So yeah, now it's pretty straightforward. You have the brain freeze. You have the jeweled lotus. Thassas. There you oh, go. Cool. Yeah. Yep. Showing the combo should be GG. People are scooping it up. Congratulations to Jamaican dude, a hard fought victory. Everyone played this game really well, but the stars aligned for Jamaican dude to be able to win through all this. Hey everyone, thank you so much for joining us today. If you want to see more of this amazing content, be sure to hit that subscribe button so you never miss a video. Big shout out to our Patreon members, we couldn't do this without your support. 
If you want to join our Patreon and get more information on the CDH League taking place on the Chaos Discord server, be sure to click the link down in the description. See you soon!